Hello. Today I needed to recreate the um, two-sided shader but within uh, Material X. Now I remember there was a two-sided shader back in the Mantra days but I needed to do it um, a, a bit more contemporary with the Material X. So um, this is this is how I did it. So I have a lop network here and I have a grid and not this is not doing anything fancy and we essentially go inside and this is pretty much a grid with a UV and a name on the grid so that when it goes into Solaris it's named correctly. The name is just automatically derived by this expression op name. If I middle click that kind of resolves to the name of this node here so it just means that I can kind of copy and paste this and the name just remove unwanted attribute there the name is also updated here as well so we have this butterfly 02 so it's just a grid one's slightly what just happened <laughs> there we go just a grid, nothing fancy, and this one's another grid just to show you there's two different types in there. So they're kind of stacked together in the tree down here. I hope you can see that. I then created a collection called Instance Me, and I'm basically creating this collection in here. So you can see we've got two IDs here. So we're going to instance them onto these points in here like that. So we've essentially just got that. So this is nothing fancy. I just wanted to test this on multiple um, things. So inside the instance, so we've got this grid, normal, scatter. We're just doing an, a random attribute here. Um, I'm creating a an ID from, I wonder if we can see that. Yeah, I'm just creating an ID from the point numbers and I'm doing a random P scale and then I'm just creating this integer value. <clears throat> well, it technically looks like a float, but I'm just creating a value of a randomness on the points of like zero and one, which I want to try and use later on. Uh, and I'll explain what that's for because I'm going to just show you something here. So then we've just got a rendering and essentially what we're going to do is create a grid which is two-sided so we can essentially see green on one side and red on the other so all we have is one material inside of here and this is pretty much it so we have the material extended surface and it has a material like a mix with a color fed in there and the bias or the mix here is being driven by this and this is kind of like the meat and potatoes or the 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 logic behind it so we essentially take a, a material x view direction at world space and a material x normal at world space and we create a dot product of that and then if it's greater than that it just returns zero and one which i've mapped into a color so it's just black and white so that's just feeding the base color of this so that essentially gives you a two-sided shader well, and sorry, a two-sided colour, really. It's not a two-sided shader at this point. So if we wanted to do that, if we wanted to maybe get rid of this um, logic here. And if we had two shaders like so, we would essentially bring in a mix filter and apply this into here like that. And we can just bring this over here and plug that in like so. So we still have the logic down here. It's just, and then we have material X one and two. So you may notice there's a little bit more going off here. Um, so if I just render this now and show you, you can see that I'm randomizing and I'm actually cutting out the alpha as well. So I've got like two textures, one, two, two butterfly textures. That's being randomized here. And then this is kind of happening up here. And then this side is literally just the same thing. We're literally taking a red and a green and we're doing the mix. And we're doing that 
from the geo index. If you remember on the points we created a 0 to 1 index and then I created an ID so I'm basically taking this using the material geometry properties node and bringing that in declaring it as an integer and then I'm just saying give me a random like a random float um, basically between 0 and 1 and then I'm just making sure that's rounded down so it's it's not got any like floating point it's an integer I think I think that's the best way to do it and then the idea is just being used as a seed so I could seed the randomization of the textures and you can see underneath these butterflies there will be a combination of the second shader which is down here so that's the other material X so you have a very unique color now so you have colors coming in here at the base color which is a combination of red green so obviously you could change that up a little bit and you'll get red and blue on the underside so you can because these are rotated around you get in the underside of it so you have a nice bit of control there to to kind of create two different looks on a very thin infinitely thin single-sided I'm just going to switch to CPU because it's a little I, I'm on my um, crappy MacBook so I'm just doing some R&D today so I think that's pretty much it so if it, what I've done down here is I've because these textures contained an alpha, I brought this in as a color four, and same for this one. And I'm kind of doing a switch here, and then it's this that's driving this switch to kind of randomly switch between these two that feeds into this first shader, which is this top side here. And then I'm extracting the alpha channel from this, so it's RGBA, and so I'm kind of grabbing the alpha and I'm just plugging the alpha into both of the material X shaders which is why we have the alpha on because these are grids so that's why you have that um, and that's it and there's loads of stuff you can do to randomize stuff uh, I'll probably break this setup now but you can like randomize this with like if I randomize the second shader here with this node and this is a material X randomize this is really cool but it needs a seed so we could essentially try to do the same thing and plug that into here and we should get a random color on the on the butterflies underneath so that's still giving me like two like it's trying to cycle through the hue wheel of two colors so um, and you can try to randomize this even more so you can actually say give me some that are like less saturated and things as well but I, I actually think when you're doing stuff like this, if you want to randomize, you could just take the actual seed here, which is the seed, and you'll get a random color here. And that's because this is just like an index. It's just, just a random value that's been seeded now. So the colors are changing on this, on this input here that's just feeding the base color on this second shader. So now you have all these controls that you can randomize. So you could take individual randomization further. So like I could create another one of these and create a well you could just create another one of these and randomize this after it as well. And so you could take this do another seed, plug in the color again, but this time don't change the let's have a look. I'll just plug that into there. So I could now change the saturation, random saturation as well. So it you know it, it you can kind of just keep tweaking it it's quite endless really what you can do with these things um, or you could pick specific colors based off of a ramp I guess as well so you could plug that into a ramp I'm going a bit off topic here to be honest um, so yeah there's like a, a very cheap and cheerful two I mean cheap and cheerful two-sided shader it, it did take a little bit of um, working out particularly 
this part here and it's just knowing which nodes exist first before you even know what to do with these things because it, it isn't really just like a two-sided node you drop down you have to kind of create this but then you can right click save this as a recipe um, uh, recipes and then you could save select it as a tool and then you could just type two-sided and save I've already got this saved I think so um, and then you can take a look at your recipes and make sure it's all there so yeah hopefully that was um, helpful thank you very much for watching Thank you.